Hello everyone. Welcome to this lecture in the neural networks from scratch series. In the previous lecture, we looked at coding the back propagation building blocks in Python. In particular, we saw how to find the derivative of the loss with respect to the weights and how to find the derivative of the loss with respect to the inputs of a given layer. And we wrote that code in Python. So uh, here was the code which we wrote down in Python in the previous lecture. We saw how to add another method which is called as the backward method whenever uh, an instance of a layer is created. So along with the forward pass, whenever a layer is initiated, we define the backward method which in an essence calculates the gradient of the loss with respect to the weights and the biases of that layer and it also calculates the gradient gradient of the loss with respect to the inputs which are coming into that layer. What is needed uh, for this backward method is D values which is the gradient of the loss with respect to the output at that particular point. So let's say if you are looking at this layer and if you want to find the gradient of the loss with respect to the weights and biases in this layer and the inputs in this layer, what you need as an input is the gradient of loss with respect to the outputs of this layer. Because remember, we are doing back propagation. In today's lecture, what we are going to learn about is that when we are doing back propagation, there are activation functions which also come in the middle. So when we are back propagating from the next layer to the previous layer to the previous layer, along with the weights and biases, there are activation functions which definitely come into the picture, something like this. So let's say this is one layer and the output of that, the neurons from that layer are Z1, Z2 and Z3. These three outputs pass through an activation function. So here we are using ReLU and then the output of this ReLU activation function is A1, A2 and A3. Now remember that we are doing back propagation. So let's say when we reach this particular stage, we will have the partial derivative of loss with respect to A1. We will have the partial derivative of loss with respect to A2 and we will have the partial derivative of the loss with respect to A3. The question which we want to answer now is that based on these three values, how do you find the partial derivative of loss with respect to Z1, Z2 and Z3? So basically we want to back propagate through the ReLU activation function, which is shown by the green arrows right now. So very similar to how we called uh, or how we defined the backward method whenever we initiated a layer, we also have to define a backward method when we initiate an activation function such as a ReLU. So uh, remember we have the ReLU activation class. So let me actually take you to that class in the notebook here. Um, so we had a lecture on activation functions where we actually defined the ReLU activation class. And uh, I'm just taking you to um, that lecture. Okay, so this was the ReLU activation class and we have defined the class like this. It has only one method forward. But now we are going to define another method in this activation class, which will be the backward method because we need to find the partial derivative of loss with respect to Z1, Z2 and Z3. Remember the inputs are the partial derivative of the loss with respect to A1, A2 and A3, which are the outputs after the ReLU uh, function is called. And I'm going to call these values, which are the inputs as D values, D values. And this comes as a matrix. So if you have three neurons, then the D values will be, let's say, uh, five, six and seven. So if it gets a matrix like this, you will know that the first uh, element is the partial derivative of loss with respect to A1. The second element is the partial derivative of loss with respect to A2. And the third element is the partial derivative of loss with respect to A3. Remember, we have these values which is the input to this method which we are trying to generate and we also have the values z1 z2 and z3 as an output we want to find the partial derivative of loss with respect to z1 with respect to z2 and with respect to z3 let me first show you how to find it for z1 and then you will have a much clear idea how to find it for z2 and z3 so we will of course use the chain rule the partial derivative of loss with respect to z1 is defined as the partial derivative of loss with respect to a1 
मल्टीप्लाइड बाय द पार्शियल डेरिवेटिव ऑफ ए वन विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू जेड वन नाउ रिमेंबर वी ऑलरेडी हैव द पार्शियल डेरिवेटिव ऑफ लॉस विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू ए वन दैट इज गिवन टू अस बट वी नीड टू इन्क्लूड पार्शियल डेरिवेटिव ऑफ ए वन विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू जेड वन सो लेट्स फाइंड फाइंड दिस सो ए वन इज ए वन इज एक्चुअली रेलू ए वन इज एक्चुअली रेलू ऑफ रेलू ऑफ जेड वन करेक्ट सो इफ यू राइट द और इफ यू प्लॉट द रेलू एक्टिवेशन फंक्शन इट एक्चुअली लुक समथिंग लाइक दिस इट इज झीरो ओवर इयर एंड इट्स अ स्ट्रेट लाइन ओवर इयर सो इफ यू फाइंड द पार्शियल डेरेवेटिव ऑफ ए वन विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू जेड वन If Z1 is negative, the partial derivative will be zero, and if Z1 is positive, the partial derivative will be one. So the answer would be that partial derivative of L with respect to Z1 will be equal to partial derivative of L with respect to A1 multiplied by partial derivative of A1 with respect to Z1, and this quantity, partial derivative of A1 with respect to Z1, is one if Z1 is greater than zero and it's zero otherwise. so similar thing will happen for z1 and z2 so the trick which we will do is that if we have partial derivative of l with respect to a1 a2 and a3 and if you want to find partial derivative of l with respect to z1 z2 and z3 first what we will do is we will say that partial derivative with respect to z1 z2 and z3 is the same is the same as the partial derivative with respect to a1 partial derivative with respect to a2 and partial derivative with respect to a3 we will first say that this is the same then what we will do is that we will check the values z1 z2 and z3 so if z1 is actually greater than 0 this thing will stay like this If Z2 is less than zero, this thing will be substituted by zero. And if Z3 is greater than zero, it will stay like this. But if Z3 is less than zero, it will also be substituted by zero. So that is the protocol which we will be following. Just to repeat, let's say if Z1, Z2, and Z3 are the inputs, partial derivative of L with respect to A1, A2, and A3 are d values, and let's say inputs are one, minus two, and three, and these d values are five, six, seven. now we need to find d inputs which is partial derivative of l with respect to z1 z2 and z3 first what we will do is that we will set d inputs equal to d values so first we will set d inputs to be equal to 5 6 and 7 then what we will do is that we will find z1 z2 and z3 z1 is greater than 0 so this first quantity will stay like this Z two is less than zero, so the second term will be substituted by zero, and the third term is greater than zero, so the third quantity will stay like this. So then partial derivative of L with respect to Z is the this matrix five, zero, and seven. That's our answer. So if I if I were to explain the protocol in English, first we set uh, this answer equal to d uh, equal to d values, which is five, six, and seven. and then wherever the input is less than 0 we set that d value to be equal to or we set that value to be equal to 0 like we set this second value to be equal to 0 and then that's our final answer this is exactly what we will be doing in code just remember the notation the inputs are called as inputs partial derivative with respect to a1 a2 and a3 are called d values and the answer which i want is called as d inputs so now let me go to the code so this is the relu activation class and we have a forward method which we have already defined it's the maximum between 0 and x which is the input that's the relu function basically now we will be defining a backward method uh, and it will look something like this so we have already defined the forward method so now let's define the backward method uh, which will be the backward pass on the relu activation so remember that d values are given to us so that will be an input to this method and first we make a copy so first what we are doing is we set the output which is d inputs this is our output first we set it equal to d values remember this is exactly what we did over here 
we set the output which is also noted as d inputs to d values and then what we will be doing is that we will check the inputs and wherever the inputs are less than or equal to zero we will set the self dot d inputs to be equal to zero so basically first we are going to copy d values so 5 6 and 7 and then we are going to look at inputs and wherever the so wherever the input is less than zero which is over here we are going to set that particular element to be equal to zero this is exactly what is done in the code so self dot d inputs this is our answer first it is the copy of the d values and then wherever the inputs are less than or equal to zero we set those values to be equal to zero that's it so defining a backward pass uh, and the backward method in the relu activation is as simple as this defining this for the softmax activation is a bit more challenging and we will have a separate lecture dedicated to that and one more lecture we have not yet covered is how to do the backward pass on the loss so up till now we have covered how to do the backward pass on the weights biases inputs and the relu activation class but we have not yet covered how to do the backward pass on the loss which is the last layer itself and it is a bit challenging if you have a cross entropy loss so we will have a separate lecture for that which we will cover in the next lecture in today's lecture it, we specifically covered how to implement back propagation for the relu activation layer uh, it's very simple you just have to define a backward method and uh, first you the output is the copy of the d values which are the gradients which are reached up till that point. Uh, so the D values are partial derivative of L with A1, A2 and A3. And then wherever the input is less than or equal to 0, we set the output to be 0 because that's what ReLU does. So if you understand the mathematical intuition and if you have written this on a piece of paper, understanding the code will be very easy. Remember that if you use the ReLU directly in Python, you will never understand how the backward pass for ReLU is implemented. But the whole purpose of this lecture series is for you to look behind the curtains and to see everything from scratch. Um, the next lecture will be looking at the partial derivative um, or the backward pass implemented on the loss function. Then we will look at the backward pass implemented on the softmax activation class. Thank you so much everyone and I'll see you in the next lecture.